There were the municipal police, and we now know it was the army that coordinated all of those forces. We filmed these images in Guerrero State in Mexico, where we went to meet our observer, Jose, who's a student at the Ayotzinapa Rural Teachers College. Now, the school has long been known in Mexico as a hotbed of social revolution. It became famous worldwide a year ago when 43 of its students, young men in their 20s, were kidnapped and never seen again. There's little doubt who killed the students, members of a drug gang that had been working hand in hand with the corrupt local police force. Those first three are our friends who died on the 26th. Did you know Julio César Mandragón? Yes, I knew him. He was a quiet, responsible guy with a young daughter. On the day of the attack, September the 26th, we were all together. He had to run to the other side and ended up alone. That's when they caught him. They gouged out his eyes and even ripped the skin off his face. Why did you want to study at this school? It's a school created for farmers' children. Because our parents can't afford to send us to private schools. All through the school, there are portraits of Lenin, Marx, and Che Guevara. Why do you love Che Guevara, for example? He is someone who marked history. He never gave up the fight. He had an ideal, the same ideal that we share in this school. The Ayatzinapa College trains the region's future teachers. But it's not like other schools, and it's easy to understand why it disturbs the authorities. What's going on over there? They are doing sport. But afterwards, when they get to the end of that little stream, they will sit down and take part in a reading session called Social Reality Analysis. Sport and ideological education at the same time? Exactly. Ernesto starts in with a bit of political education. We aren't going to exonerate the government from its responsibilities. Its members exert pressure on us month after month, year after year. The student goes on to explain how to act in the case of a clash with the police. Adrenaline is what counts. Without it, you will be able to jump from there to there. But with adrenaline, you will jump over to the next one. You also need to know the area well. It helps to do some reconnaissance. You're very young. Aren't you frightened of repression? Because he talks to you about repression. I know that they can hit us, suppress us, make us disappear and kill us. But that does not scare me. On the contrary, it gives me courage. They're convinced that they are the bearers of a new political order for the whole of Mexico. I tell my friends that everything can stem from here, from our families and from this school. In our town, we are setting up a people's council to get rid of the president. We want people to be able to manage their own resources. 
When we hear them talk about Marx and their clashes with the police, it's easy to forget their age. Like them, the 43 students who disappeared were barely 20 years old. We leave to go and meet the mother of one of the 43 in a small village. One hour by car from the school. Hello. Are you Everardo's mother? Yes, that's right. I'm the mother of Everardo Rodriguez Veot. Did he live here? Yes. And he still lives here. We're still waiting for him. He's a very hard-working young man. Sometimes he looks for day work and he goes off and does it. He used to call me boss. He liked to call me that. When I'm a teacher, he'd say, I'm going to buy a little plot of land. I'll build a house and I'll help you too. The government is carrying out an investigation. What are your feelings about that? Well, it's a government investigation, so it's pointless. Instead of taking care of us, the government kills us and kidnaps us. I feel sad, really sad. One of our family members is missing. I think about it all the time, how he's doing, if he's being fed or not. Today is Mexican Independence Day. Students from the school and the parents of those who disappeared are heading to Chilpancingo, the state capital, to protest. They shouldn't be celebrating as though nothing had happened because 43 of our friends are missing. On the way, there's a succession of road blockades, a reminder that Guerrero is the most dangerous state in Mexico. There is a deep-rooted culture of hatred between police officers and Ayatzinapa students. The disappearance of the 43 students only made matters worse. Today, though, there are no incidents. The various police forces allow the bus to continue on its way. There are protests and more protests. And the case is followed closely by the Mexican public. So the government wants to show it is in control of the situation. Many activists question the results of the official inquiry. It claims that the young people were the mistaken victims of a score settling between drug gangs. I will take you to where the young people were attacked. We are in the road where the students were chased by several police patrols. Here you can see bullet holes. As you can see, they were very heavy caliber weapons. This is made of concrete, but the bullet went a long way in. Do you know for sure who took part in the attack on 26th of September? There were the municipal police, the ministerial police, and the state police. And we now know that on that night, it was the army that coordinated all of those forces. The official version is that the drug gang was running things. 
They were making the decisions. Do you think that's true? That is the official version, because the government has always refused to take responsibility. But you don't have any proof that it was the government. Yes, there is proof. You only need to read the conclusions of the expert group of the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights. They have interviewed lots of eyewitnesses, saw all the videos. This is state-sponsored crime. One question remains, though. If they were really killed just after they were kidnapped, which is the most plausible hypothesis, where are the bodies? We follow a federal police patrol in a neighborhood of Iguala, which is controlled by the Guerrero's Unidos gang. There's proof that members of the gang took part in the students' kidnapping. Get moving. We'll come back later. The public prosecutor maintains that the 43 students' bodies were burned by the drug dealers at a rubbish tip. They may have been buried here, in these isolated hills. Investigators have searched the area, but it seems that the police have been forbidden to talk about it. According to the federal police, there are at least six or seven mass graves in this area controlled by the Guerreros Unidos. It's impossible to say whether the Ayotzinapa students were indeed killed and buried here. There are many other theories. And what's terrible is that the victims' families will perhaps never really know what happened on the 26th of September. We're going to stay in touch with Jose to see if we ever learn exactly what happened on that dark night one year ago. In the meantime, if you think you have a story the world needs to know about, get in touch. It's easy. You can do it via Twitter, Facebook or WhatsApp, or just a plain old email to our website, observers.france24.com. We'll see you next time.